we had to do the, these like Christmas themed posters and it's like you got to take a, a song title or something and uh, and you know like paint it or whatever medium you want to do well I uh, I cut out different like layers of construction paper and I made I put this amazing fucking picture of, uh, of Jesus on the cross and my slogan was hanging tough <laughs> and my fucking teacher was so fucking pissed off you're the cross This is Metal Mel from Dirty Rock Nation, and we are here amongst the dumpster and amongst the grit and the dirty shit outside of this Dirty Rock Club. And I am with who? Phil from Toxic Holocaust. Tell me what your first band was like. My first band? Yeah. Oh, my first band was like kind of like a, a skate thrash, skate punk band. This is back when I was. This is like 20 years ago. This is. Uh, I was. I was 14 years old. This is like. Oh man, like this is the beginning of the 90s that I was in this band. It was a band called Boneless, actually. Actually, when I first joined Toxic, the uh, drummer we had, uh, he was also from Toronto. This this guy Al, he he played in that band too. We were in high school and we had this band, Boneless, and it was just all about like skateboarding. We had a song called Ten Mile Hill. I remember that. Did you get any chicks because you were in Boneless? Uh, no. Well, maybe. I don't know. I, I, I remember dating this girl back then. I, would, I guess she was kind of stoked that I was in a band, but then I, I think she ended up fucking hating it after a while. Back then, was there always jokes about you guys having boners? Um, I'm there, I'm sure there's some shit talkers behind her back calling us bonerless or something. I would have figured. You know what I mean? 14 years old, boner. It could be pretty funny. Yeah. Oh, I remember originally we called the band... Uh, slow acidic death because we thought we were going to be a death metal band and we were like no we we're not capable of playing that kind of music so Fuck on the fucking beast! Fuck yeah! what would you say is the best venue for you to do a show at the best venue you mean like uh the best venue that i've played at yeah I, I like play, I like playing this place. This is the second time I've been here, and, and the last time I was here was fucking fun. So, right here we're at Northern Lights. What's the best place to actually be at a show in the audience? Best place to be at a show in the audience. Hmm. I don't, that's a hard one to say. There's there's a lot of fucking cool places. There's a lot of bars in you know Austin, Texas. Yeah. I like going to see shows there. Like places like Emos and Red Seven there. And um, place I'm thinking of. I was just talking with a guy about uh, uh, the Chant Gypsy. That's yeah. a great. That's a great fucking place to see a show. Um, a lot of times I don't get to see the show. You know, I'm, I'm usually being an idiot, like drinking beer in the parking lot or something. So. No, no. I'm sure that never happens. That never, never fucking happens. You no, know, I grew up on Labatt 50. But that's like, I drink it now, it's a little too thick for me. I don't know, I'm kind of, I'm, you know, Budweiser's all right, but I kind of like it cheap and shitty. I don't know. like King of beers. I don't, whenever I'm, I'm on the East Coast, I, I'd like to drink Yingling a lot. I think that's a fucking killer beer. But uh, other than that, it's like shotgun a fucking PBR or something. I don't, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Rock Nation, and I ask everybody this: What does Dirty Rock mean to you? Dirty Rock means everything. It means uh, it means I can go on tour and not have to shower for six days and shit like that. Although I've been showering every day on this tour, just I don't know. That's pretty po that's that, that sounds like a, a poser saying that, but. Everybody's fucking ass on this one, we're gonna nuke the fucking. band I played in we had a, a touring sound guy with us and we were in uh, uh, British Columbia Canada and a guy gave us these six pot cookies and he's like don't ever eat any more than a half of a cookie 
And this poor guy ate, he didn't hear the warning and ate an entire cookie that night. And we were sitting on the bus and we were just like, surrounding him, just kind of taunting him. It was like, we thought, we were sure he was either going to piss himself or puke. And he ended up puking first, but, and it's probably the best thing for him just to kind of get it out of his system a bit. But, but really, I'm, you know, not to toot my own horn, but I got a bit of a fucking cast iron stomach. You're a lucky man. I could tell my share of puking stories, but not today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for doing this. Do you have any last uh, closing lines for the Dirty Rockers out there in the nation? putting out our record and relapse uh, conjuring command and I hope everybody is excited as uh, we are we're gonna be playing some new material tonight so all right well thank you so much you're watching dirty rock nation oh late we eat your okay <laughs> I only gave do I got one of those stickers or what ninth grade art class uh, I, I painted a watercolor picture because they were like, okay, watercolors, you know, you want it, it's, it's nice and light colors. And you want it, you want to do a scenery or something like that, something you really like. So I painted a picture of a fucking urinal cake with a bite out of it. And the teacher hated it, even though it looked amazing. We grew.